God meant for us to come together. Forsake not the gathering of yourselves together, he says, Hebrews 10. And so here's the third thing about sheep. Sheep are ignorant. <clears throat> Pastor Carl, you calling me dumb? Yes. Wasn't it Will Rogers said we're all ignorant in some area? <laughs> And we're all ignorant when it comes to the things of God. For God calls us children. (laughs) Children. When it comes to the things of God. And and so uh, sheep just... I just can't imagine telling a sheep to go get the morning paper. Can you? (laughs) I mean, this morning I told Scout, hey, go get my paper. And he runs down to the road, gets my paper, and brings it back to me. And then he looks over my shoulder when I'm reading the sports page, you know, and he likes to keep up too, you know. Incredibly smart. Incredibly smart. Um, and then another characteristic of sheep is they, they're wanderers. They are notorious for wandering off. They, 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 they nibble real close with their head down, you know, and pretty soon they're gone. They just wandered off. That's a characteristic of sheep. Hey, do you know what? That's a characteristic of you and me. We have, we are prone to wander. Isaiah 53, 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And so wander. Uh, Here's another thing about sheep. They're defenseless. They are easy prey for the enemy. They don't have big claws like a bear. They don't have fangs to fight with. They don't have any weapons. And they're not fast like a gazelle so they can get away. They're slow. They got a big wool coat. They're easy prey. That's why in the 23rd Psalm, he says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The rod was a big club that the shepherd carried to protect the sheep. And sheep need protection here's another thing about sheep sheep are useful they are useful God's people God's flock are to be useful what were sheep useful for well they produced wool they produced milk they produced lambs they were not eaten that was not a common thing now they were killed for sacrifices in worship Romans 12, present your body a living sacrifice, the Bible says. And so they are a perfect picture of us. Now, what is, the, what is the shepherd supposed to do? He's supposed to feed the sheep, shepherd the flock of God. It includes feeding. It includes providing. The, the, the shepherd is supposed to lead the sheep into the, the lush green pastures of the word of God. Feed the sheep. The second thing that the shepherd is to do is to oversee. Shepherd the flock of God among you, exercising oversight. You see it there in verse 2? Exercising oversight. He is to oversee. Look in that verse, verse 2, and see that the shepherd is among you. He is both among you and he is over you. Shepherd the flock of God among you. There's among. Exercising oversight. And so the shepherd is both. He is among and he is over. The pastors administer the work. And the pastors are the administers of the work, and the people are the ministers. And uh, now there are some dangers with this. Since, since God calls some people to some leadership, the devil tries to get in, and he tries to, because those people who are called the leaderships, leadership are sinners too, uh, they have temptation too, and the devil tries to come in, and here's some dangers. Look at this, uh, look at this verse 2. Exercising oversight. Not under compulsion, but voluntarily. The first danger is laziness. And since we don't have any problem with that, I'm going to just move right on. 
But he says, not under compulsion, but voluntary. Uh, The second danger he says in this verse is not under compulsion, but voluntary, according to the will of God, not for sordid gain, but with eagerness. The second danger is covetousness. Covetousness. Don't do this just for gain. I don't know how many times in our staff meeting I've told our staff, We're not here for us. We're here for them. We're not here for what we can gain. We're here for what we can give. We're not here for our profit. We're here for their profit. We're here to serve. That's why we're here. And not for sordid gain. Now, there's two scriptures there that we won't even take time to look at. But 1 Corinthians 9 and 1 Timothy 5 tells us that the that the overseers, that the pastors should be paid so they can give their full attention to overseeing the flock. And uh, in fact, uh, 1 Timothy says they are worthy of double honor. And the word honor is honorarium or salary. So that means, deacons, you need to double all of our salaries. But I know what Drevo's going to say. You're already making twice what you're worth. So I'm going to move on. Not for sordid gain. Did you see that little phrase? But with what? Say it with me. Eagerness. 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 God wants his leaders to be eager about his work. Now, he wants the same thing for you eager if you have to build a fire under people isn't that irritating this is one of the number one things i look for when when we bring on staff here is this guy eager about god's word or am i going to have to tell him hey you got to put in so many hours a week and blah 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 i don't want to do that i want to have to get out of his way and let him work you know eagerness eagerness This is what Paul said. Look at Romans 115 on your sheet. Paul wrote to the church at Rome. He said, as for my part, I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. Paul didn't say, I'll come if you guarantee guarantee me so much salary or so much gift or whatever. Can you imagine Paul saying that? No, sir. Paul said, I'll let God worry about that. I'm here to preach. I'm coming to Rome to minister, and I'm eager. I can't wait. Eagerness is the difference between a true shepherd and a hireling. Jesus spoke about a hireling in John 10. A hireling is somebody who's in it just for the paycheck. 